In this video, we're going to solve a subnetting problem. You're designing a subnet mask for this network, 172.21.0.0, and we want 70 subnets with up to 300 hosts on each subnet. Those are going to be usable hosts. Which subnet mask should we use? Well, the first thing we need to do to solve this problem is we need to determine the class of that address. This 172 tells us all we need to know. A class A address starts 0 to 127, class B is 128 to 191, and a class C address is 192 to 223. So which class are we looking at here? You'll notice that that class, 172, falls in this range here. So it's a class B network. And a class B network always starts with the same subnet mask slash 16 or 255.255.0.0 or slash 16 if we're using the CIDR notation. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to convert that subnet mask to binary. It's not much of a conversion, it's really easy to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to write out all the ones and the zeros in that subnet mask. The slash 16 that you know class B is always starting in a class six, uh, slash 16, uh, represents the 16 ones in the subnet mask. The other 16 bits are 0. And then the 255.255.0.0, if we chose to convert that to binary, we'd see we have 8 ones, and 8 ones, and 8 zeros, and 8 zeros. So I'm going to draw that out. There's my subnet mask. That is my subnet mask in binary. It's so much easier to work in binary when we're working with these IP addresses. Even though it's not always the most familiar to people, this is really a great way to go. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the great divide. And the great divide is the divide between the networks and the hosts. And this is where that divide comes in. This represents the networks the network portion of the IP addresses, and this is the hosts over here. And What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to borrow some bits, turn some of these zeros into ones, in order to create 70 subnets and up to 300 hosts on each subnet. There's only one answer that will work. So in order to do that, we're going to count by the powers of two. If you understand that every bit has two possible values, a 0 or a 1, you'll know that this first bit, if we only borrowed one bit, we'd actually make two subnets, and our network would have about half the number of usable hosts. If we borrow two bits, there's actually four combinations that we can make out of four, uh, out of two bits. We could do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And if we borrowed 3 bits, we'll notice that doubles again to 8. And what we're interested in when we're doing subnetting is the number of combinations we can get out of the bits we borrow. How many combinations can we make out of those 3 bits? Now we have 8 combinations with 3 bits. It's the same as using 2 to the n, if you use this style the n represents the number of bits you want to borrow. So 2 to the 1 would be worth 2, 2 to the 2 would be worth 4, 2 to the 3 would be worth 8. If you're using a calculator that makes it easy. But I like to do everything by hand because then I feel like it's a little easier to visualize and understand. So how many bits are we going to borrow in order to get 70 subnets? We need a number that's 70 or greater. So, in order to do this, I'm going to count by the powers of 2. I'm going to count going this way until I get to a number that's greater or equal to 70. So if I say 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, still don't quite have enough for my 70 subnets, and then this one is actually worth 128, suddenly I have enough. Okay, I'm going to draw a line there. This is going to be my subdivide. 
and these will represent my subnets. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Those are the bits that I'm going to borrow to make at least 70 subnets, actually 128 subnets. And now I just need to verify. I'm going to double check my work and I'm going to count back the other way. Do I have at least 300 hosts per subnet? Well, I'll start here and I can do the same kind of counting. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. 512 is finally enough to fit those 300 hosts. But there's one thing you always have to remember with hosts. It's always 2 to the n minus 2 because we lose an address for the network ID and we lose an address for the broadcast address. So this number, it's not really 512, it's really 510 usable hosts. But that's still enough to make large enough networks. I can make at least 70 subnets and I can make those subnets worth at least 300 hosts. So I've chopped this class B network into these pieces and I'm turning all of these into ones in my subnet mask. And now all I have to do is convert this back to decimal to make a subnet mask because the answer is looking for the subnet mask we want to use. Now there's two ways to display a subnet mask. You can use the CIDR notation which counts up the number of ones and uses that type of notation. And we started at 16 and then we went 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Slash 23 is one way to write your answer. Or you can convert this number back to decimal. This number 11111110 is equal to 254. So the answer can be represented as 255.255.254.0. So if we're really showing the subnet mask, this one's probably the more appropriate answer. If we're looking for the CIDR notation, the slash 23 would do it. And that's how you determine how many bits to borrow when you're subnetting an address.